Welcome back to the channel guys, Nick here. Just a quick video on high ticket drop shipping. Okay, a lot of you guys have asked me, how do you find high ticket products? How do you find high ticket supplies? I'm gonna run you through it today. First things first though guys, make sure you like the video, leave a comment below, it really helps me out, subscribe, okay? Stay tuned, got lots of cool videos coming and you supporting this channel is gonna help this channel help more people. So subscribe, like, comment, hit the notification bell and let's get into it. Now, I do suggest that you go and watch my product research videos because they are kind of linked to this. And I've got some pretty cool announcements coming at the end, guys. So what you can expect from today is basically an overview on what high ticket dropshipping is, how you can go about it, how you can source products, how you can find suppliers, and then how you can convince suppliers to allow you to sell their products, okay? So I'm gonna show you the requirements of all these things and how you can sell high ticket dropshipping products on your store, okay? Let's get into it. All right, so what is high ticket dropship? Now, most of the dropshipping as you know it is gonna be low ticket dropshipping. And to me, what this means is anything that's not 15 to $100. So $100 plus is to me, when you're starting to get, you know, it's gonna be a lot harder to convince people to buy because obviously there's that bigger dollar value, especially on Facebook. So this approach is really geared to what I specialize in and that's Google and Google Shopping, okay? So generally, you're not gonna be sourcing these products from AliExpress. You can find certain products here, but what tends to happen is these higher ticket dropshipping products, they either tend to be a little bit too expensive, but normally the issue is that they, they are harder to ship because they're heavier or bulkier, okay? So the products we're gonna be selling tend to be larger items normally. And this is actually a strategy used by dropshippers on eBay, on Amazon, all sorts of dropshippers, right? So this is a strategy used a lot by dropshippers on Amazon. So if you've ever tried to sell something on Amazon, the Chinese suppliers there, they are so competitive with their pricing that most people can't compete. But where they fail is on larger items. With this, you can either source local products or private label. And because they're bigger and heavier, generally, generally speaking, you can find that you're able to sell these more competitively on Google Shopping or eBay or wherever it is you choose to do it, and then run ads to these things using Google Shopping and make a much, much bigger dollar profit per unit than say, you know, your 20, $30 items that you're flinging Facebook ads. Are. But for this approach, we need to be using Google Shopping and to an extent Google search down the tracks. Once someone clicks your ad, goes on your website and then buys, you are gonna order the product from your supplier whether it be local or if you choose to warehouse something yourself. So you're probably asking, why do high ticket drop shipping? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? Tell me a bit more about it, Nick. So guys, it's harder to source, okay? So whenever something tends to be harder, being lazy people, most people are not gonna go to the effort of sourcing high ticket products. And I know I'm gonna get so many comments below telling me, oh, I can't find products or suppliers don't wanna to sell to me, okay? And that's rubbish, guys. You're being lazy. You need to get creative with this stuff and you need to get out there into shops themselves, speak to people, get on the phone to people, and it's gonna be harder to get products. It's not gonna be as easy as importing the product into your store. Because it's harder to source these products and find these suppliers, you're gonna have less competition. So there's gonna be less people doing it. For example, a product I sell, I am the only person selling the product. No one else is allowed to sell it because I've negotiated an exclusive agreement. But I'm targeting Australia only. I specialize in this industry. I have been within it in the last eight years and I know the ins and outs of it. I've got good contacts, but it took a long time to build that, right? So be patient. Generally, you're gonna get faster shipping times. Anything from two to seven days, okay? Which is much, much better than e-packet or any of the AliExpress shipping methods. So most suppliers are gonna have an MAP policy, which is a minimum advertised price. Now, basically a minimum advertised price is when you sign up to become a supplier, you're gonna say, I agree that I will not sell below this price and everyone else is gonna have to do the same or supply will be cut off to them. It also allows you to give a better customer experience. You're gonna have less chargebacks, more repeat business, which is great if you're trying to build a long-term business or you don't want the headaches. You're gonna have way less customer service headaches. You're probably not gonna need a VA and you're gonna have a much, much more pleasurable experience dropshipping. The, the next thing is you're gonna have more profit dollars, so more margin dollars per sale. So your percent is gonna be lower, but the dollars you get are gonna be higher. So this means you can afford to spend a bit more on advertising and you can afford your cost per purchase to be a bit higher. And as we all know, advertising 
online has become so much more competitive that you need to have that buffer in order to be profitable, okay? And less orders needed to build a solid business. That's, that's my favorite. I don't need many orders and I can make reasonable sums of money. That's the amazing part about this. You're not sitting there fulfilling orders all day. You're not having to answer a million customer service questions. You don't need many orders and you can do really, really well. Okay, just to clarify this a bit further in detail, guys, here is an example of a low ticket product. We've got this back brace. You would have seen it all across the internet. You run your Facebook ads to this product and you're selling them at $29.99. You've bought it at $4 on AliExpress, so you're making $25.99. Now, here's this playground set for kids. Say you're buying it at $5.99 wholesale. I'll actually show you the example in a second of the product that I'm saying. And $5.99 is an indicative figure. You're selling at $8.99 and you're making $300 of profit, right? So you can afford your cost per purchase to be significantly higher. Your margin of error here is so small, guys. You get chargebacks, you get uh, PayPal withholding, Stripe withholding, all of these different issues that are gonna pop up and they're magnified by the number of orders, right? So your room for area here is much, much lower, okay? You're gonna get $300 every single time you sell this product. Now, you're not gonna sell as many, but you don't need to. 10 of these, if you sell 10 of these, and only one of these, this is still more profit. So how good is that, guys? So here are the three steps to high ticket dropshipping, okay? You need a visually appealing, high converting online store. This is super important. No one is gonna trust you to buy a $900, $1,000 item or anywhere in between there if you don't have a good looking store, if it doesn't look trustworthy, if it's not fully optimized for conversions and it looks spammy, people are not gonna trust you. This is super, super important given the nature of these products, guys. These are expensive. People are not gonna risk not getting the product, okay? It's that simple. You then need a thoroughly researched niche or product so I'm gonna get into these steps in a moment. And you need reliable supplies, okay? You need to first find these supplies. You then need to get in contact with them, reach out and say that you want to create an account with them and then get approved to sell their products, okay? From here, obviously, you were gonna run ads as well. So that is the last step. So the store. So as I said, it needs to be properly optimized for conversions. It needs to be easy to navigate and we need to be able, people need to jump on and be able to find similar products. So if someone comes on looking for an office chair and you're selling a black office chair, but you do have other ones, make sure it's easy for them to find it because you never know. If someone's just looking for an office chair, you know, maybe they're looking for the brown one. Maybe they're looking for one with a higher back. Maybe they're looking for one that's a gaming style. You'll see stores like Amazon, Overstock, Wayfair, all these guys are fantastic at grouping collections, right? So if, if your collection grouping doesn't make sense, then you're going to lose out on sales. People are going to people on shopping are there comparing things. They're shopping around. They're having a look. Okay, so you need to be able to make it easy for them to navigate your store. And I'll show you an example in a second. So I'm going to reveal my favorite theme in another video. So stay tuned for that, guys. So just jumping out, I'll show you what a good store looks like that's optimized for conversions and that is perfect for Google Shopping and selling on Google. So guys. I'm in here, the store's called Wayfair. You've probably seen it before. They're a very, very big online retailer. And have a look here. They've got lots and lots and lots of categories along here, grouped really well, appliances, refrigerators. They go down to that next level of detail, okay? You can't just have dog. These guys have dog furniture, dog beds, dog crates, and so on and so forth, okay? It's got a very small banner, but it's advertising products, okay? It's not just a useless image. They then allow you to shop by department. They've got extra sales and stuff. It's a very, very visually appealing store. And it's clear that these guys are a legitimate retailer, okay? Now, if we actually go into one of these collections and we go into, say, furniture, it's gonna give us options here, okay? So let's go into sofas. Okay, so as you can see, they've got the breadcrumbs here, so it's very easy for someone to go back and navigate. If they're looking for a sofa, they're not found what they want, but they actually wanna go and check out the rest of your living room furniture allow them to go back there, allow them to sort and then have great filters here, okay? And people can easily navigate the collection. Navigating collection is super important, okay? Again, on the product page, they then make it very easy for the person to go and have a look around. They have the you might also need or shop this collection. So they've got similar things here, compare similar items, visually similar related products. These guys, look at how much extra stuff and then they've got related searches. Now, I'm not saying you necessarily need to have this, 
but this is kind of what you need to make it to make your store look perfect especially as a general store but across the board for google shopping because people are going to come they're going to look they're going to compare okay okay so the products and niche research okay now in terms of the niche what i'm talking about right now guys is probably more geared to a general store or a broad niche store okay something that's going to have multiple collections and this is going to allow us to sell uh, a whole variety of items okay now you can make this work with a broad niche as well but for argument's sake let's just stick to a general store okay so your products do not need to be trending they do not need to be wacky or cool but they do need search volume so just click above you're going to see my product research video it's really going to help you with this and i cover this in a lot of my videos i'll leave a few in the links below as well so make sure that there's search volume for whatever you're selling okay now I'll, to do the research i want you to start with a broad theme and then dig deeper okay start off with something like furniture and go into amazon go into your local furniture shop go into you know a target a kmart anywhere that's kind of selling anything that you're selling and then have a look around okay amazon online is very easy wayfair overstock all those ones that i mentioned before jump on there start at the broad category so say furniture drill down into kids furniture uh, have a look around there see what's catching your eye then drill down even deeper kids outdoor furniture okay and then you're going to come onto something you know that's going to potentially have a brand and it's going to be something like the one that i showed you in the earlier video that little outdoor kids playground so plum play lookout tower play center with swings if someone is searching that they're very very interested in what you've got okay but you're going to come up in these kids outdoor furniture and kids furniture searches as well because that's how you're going to categorize it in the google shopping feed okay now let me show you how i came to this conclusion so on amazon what i've done i've come into the kids home store category so and then i've gone price high to low because i want to find high ticket products and basically what i worked out was a lot of the hot kids high ticket products were furniture related right have a look here furniture furniture now okay some of them aren't but a lot of the products on here were furniture so i go okay this is a good starting point i then went into google and i googled kids outdoor furniture because i had to look around here and i'm going okay there's furniture but what about outdoor furniture kids like playing outside when they're not on the ipads so kids outdoor furniture it's another category within kids right now you could start this and just do kids furniture and go from there but i like kids outdoor furniture especially given that in the us it's currently summer all right so I then had a look around, I'm like, oh, this is some good stuff, let's dig deeper. So I clicked into Google Shopping, and I had a look through here, right? And look at this, all of these products are quite high ticket, okay? Kids Craft, that's an example of something you could go and find, and look, there's 10, okay, there's 10 shops there, try and find something a bit less competition, but I would then look up, okay, where is Kids Craft? Can I get my product from Kids Craft direct? Or is there another middleman that I can get it and then still be in the ballpark okay can i sell it at 259 269 can i sell it at the same price as these guys so very very good way to do this research guys start off broad dig deeper 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 okay and as i was scrolling through here i came across this and i'm going 830 bucks awesome okay there's only five shops selling it. it's not too bad so and look 830 plus the 162 delivery if i can sell it at 899 or even 999 be in the ballpark with these guys and get it at a decent price, I can make serious cash off this, okay? So I then just Googled Kids Craft, okay? And I came to their FAQs and I found, how can I become a Kids Craft dealer, okay? And it sets out all the requirements. Now, for a lot of this stuff, you're gonna need a tax ID. Most countries in Australia, it's very, very easy. It's very quick. You can do it online, okay? You're gonna get your tax ID and you're gonna give them all this information. Not everyone is gonna require this level of detail, but some of them are. So just keep in mind, you are probably gonna to have to show them some level of detail. So following on from the product research, I've kind of touched on the supplier research. So to find these guys, what specifically I do is, I go into Google, I grab the brand name of the product, okay? And I go niche or product name, suppliers USA. Brand name, how to become a dealer, how to become a reseller, how to become a wholesaler for these products how to contact wholesalers now you're going to find it most of these big brands are going to have a wholesaler or dealer section 
and you're just gonna have to go through that application process. If the company is smaller, you can probably just jump on the phone, send them an email or send them an email and jump on the phone. And it might take you multiple attempts to do it guys, but show them that you're keen, show them you've got a good online store. And this is another reason why I say have a good professional looking online store. If they jump on your store and it's rubbish, why would they let you tarnish their brand name? They're not going to. They have multiple people contacting them. They're gonna be picky. Once you go into these websites, as I just showed you, locate the section and go through the steps I just told you to become a dealer or authorized reseller. Now, don't get lazy. You're gonna to need to try multiple, multiple brands to do this, guys. Lots of people are gonna say no to you, harden up, okay? It's, it's a tough business. You are gonna eventually manage to convince someone. You're gonna get better and better, improve, work on how to sell, okay? Learn the process of convincing people how to influence people. Remember in my group the other day, I showed you a book that I really recommend on influence, okay? So read that, read you know Dale Carnegie books, read uh, the Wolf of Wall Street book. Now, you're gonna get better and better at this, okay? And this is my point. Consistency will make you a master at this. If you do this on a regular basis, you are gonna exercise that idea muscle. And you're gonna be able to consistently come up with great products using this process. You're also gonna get better at getting supplies on board. My job in my nine to five was actually, I was the person people came to if you wanted to range your products in BCF, okay? BCF was the equivalent of a Bass Pro or Dick's Sporting Goods in Australia. Massive retailer, 160 stores around Australia, huge, okay? One order with us could completely change a business. And people would come to us all the time. I was the gatekeeper. So I can tell you right now, some people, it took them 30 times to get through to me, okay? Some people, it took years. And then, but the ones that I saw were consistently innovating or changing things or showing good initiative or had good presentations or had good products, had good initiative, like all these things matter. And the more you do it, the better you're gonna get at it. Now, lastly, okay, so we've worked out what we wanna sell. We've found someone to source it we're gonna set up a Google Shopping campaign. Now, click the video above to learn how to set one of these up if you've never done it before. It's, I walk you through it step by step. Uh, next step, we're gonna to wanna to import it into Bing Shopping as well. And then we wanna run a Facebook DPA retargeting ad. I'll leave a link to that as well above. Now, guys, this is all it takes. Run your Google Shopping ad, just like the way I showed you, go through that process, Run Bing ads at the same time. Not gonna be huge search volume, but you're gonna get some sales from it as well, and it's less competitive, lower cost per click. Easy, easy way, okay? Have your retargeting set up, and you're gonna see, guys, this is gonna be a much, much easier way. You're gonna have less headaches, and you're gonna really enjoy the process. Now, coming up next, guys, I am releasing my course very, very soon. It's done. I'm actually just polishing it off. I'm getting people to test it. I'm making sure it is the greatest Google course for e-commerce out there. It's nothing like the other ones. It is much more detailed. It's gonna show you how, if you're a beginner, how to actually find products. It's gonna tell you how to find, it's gonna tell you how to come up with a proper Google strategy for the, your store and where you're at. So if you're more advanced, it tailors to you, okay? This is kind of like a course that's in between group coaching and a course. It's, it's you know, learn at your own pace, but I go into much more detail. I'll show you lots of strategies that other people aren't teaching you, and I will be taking you through in greater detail, but I urge you, I'm gonna leave the link below to sign up to the VIP waiting list, and if you sign up to that, you're gonna get much, much better pricing. You're gonna get much, much better support, and guys, the group that I'm gonna create for that is gonna be next level. You're gonna have very, very regular lives with me and I'm gonna bring people on and we're gonna go through your specific store. I'm gonna, it's gonna be kind of a group coaching group. I'm gonna be active in it. You guys know the group, my free group, I'm very, very active in it. And I'm not gonna be one of these people that's making my entire income off courses. Digital marketing agency, e-commerce are my main kettle of fish, but I wanted to help you guys out as well. People have asked me for this. I've put it together. I've put a lot of time in it. I've spent three months recording it guys. I've gone to such level, I'm making it perfect, okay? And alongside it, I'm also releasing a coaching program. Now, within this coaching program, it's probably gonna be centered on e-com, Google ads, high ticket, but then if you're looking at starting a digital marketing agency as well, or just want digital marketing coaching, I'm totally here. I'm only gonna be taking two to three students a month in this program. 
I do urge you to apply. I'll leave the link to that below as well. So you can go through, see what you're going to learn and then decide, okay, if you think it's for you, go through my application process. And if you're a suitable candidate, we'll jump on a call and work out whether or not this is the right program for you. Okay. Now, lastly, I am creating a free e-commerce course and membership area. For all these things, if you want to get notified by them and join, guys, the free e-commerce course is only going to be free for a limited time, okay? It's going to be a central location for all my best content, for all my best YouTube and free content in one central location, and it's going to have lots of exclusive offers for the people in there. So I do recommend if you can't afford to invest in a course or coaching program, jump in there, get started, get some runs on the board, and then if you want to, totally up to you. You don't have to buy the course or coaching program, guys. I'm still going to be here. I'm still going to be providing with value. And I hope to see you in the next video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll talk to you soon.